Hello everyone, it's Pastor James again with another uh, midweek devotion. Another chance for you and I to spend a few moments uh, setting our minds on things that are above. Uh, and last week, if you might recall, I um, talked, started talking about the Lord's Prayer, uh, that most famous of all prayers uh, taught by Jesus himself. Uh, and last week just looked at those opening words, Our Father, uh, who art in heaven, uh, and pondered with you what that might mean. Uh, this week, I thought we might just spend a few moments uh, considering the next uh, part of the Lord's Prayer, uh, which is when Jesus invites us and teaches us to pray, uh, Hallowed be thy name. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. What does it mean to hallow God's name? You know, God has many different names, so when you think about it, um, some of those names describe a relationship, uh, like the God of Abraham, of Isaac, and of Jacob. Uh, some of those names uh, describe some of God's attributes. Uh, El Shaddai, for example, uh, means God Most High. Uh, Emmanuel means God uh, with us. There's also the name uh, revealed uh, by God to Moses, uh, sometimes called the Tetragrammaton because it has four uh, Hebrew uh, letters. Uh, in English, it's W H, uh, excuse me, Y H W H. Uh, sometimes uh, pronounced Yahweh. But uh, our Jewish brothers and sisters uh, consider this name to be so holy that they don't say it uh, out loud. Uh, so most of our Bible translations, you'll see it as uh, Lord, all in uppercase uh, letters. Uh, an important name uh, for God. There's also, of course, uh, the name that Jesus himself uh, teaches us in this prayer uh, to, to address God as Abba, uh, which in Aramaic means Father. Father, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. God's name is precious to us. It's a gift to us uh, by telling us God's name, uh, we now have an ability to address God, to be in relationship God, to, with God, to speak to God and to be heard uh, by God. And so God's name is very uh, important, important enough that one of uh, the commandments that God teaches, one of the Ten Commandments, uh, is to honor uh, that name and not to misuse uh, that name. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God. You know, God's name throughout Scripture is something that is praised uh, and honored uh, and revered. Uh, just a few examples um, from the book of Psalms. Psalm 103, uh, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Psalm 113, 3, From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Psalm 145, I will extol you, my God and King, and bless your name forever and ever. Every day I will bless you and praise your name forever and ever. God's name, a precious gift to be praised and celebrated and given thanks for. And all that leads us to Jesus uh, teaching us to pray, Hallowed be thy name. The very first petition Jesus teaches us in the Lord's Prayer is to hallow God's name, to make holy, to sanctify, to revere and honor the name of God. Now, I like how Martin Luther teaches us to do that uh, in his small catechism when he tells us what it means to hallow God's name. It is true, he says, that God's name is holy in itself, but we ask in this prayer that it may also become holy in and among us. And then Luther teaches us how this comes about. Uh, he says, whenever the word of God is taught clearly and purely, and we as God's children also live holy lives according to it. To this end, help us, dear Father in heaven. We are uh, God's children uh, who can hallow God's name by living holy lives according to it. Hallowed lives, in other words, are what truly hallow God's name. You know, we all have names uh, that are special uh, to us, but one of our most important names might be the name Christian. You know, this name quite literally means that we belong to Christ. Christians belong to Christ. We are children 
of the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ through our baptisms into Christ. We have been given the family name, uh, you might say, and we now have a responsibility to live up to it. You know, we don't always do that. We don't always live up to this name, of course, which will bring us to the petition to forgive us uh, our trespasses uh, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Uh, but we are invited nonetheless to seek to live in a way that brings honor and glory and praise to the name Christian, to the name that God has given to us. When I think about that, uh, it reminds me of a, of a poem, a poem by Carol Wimmer, uh, which is entitled, When I Say I Am a Christian, and thought I would conclude with this particular poem. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not shouting I've been saved, I'm whispering. I get lost sometimes. That's why I chose this way. When I say I am a Christian, I don't speak with human pride. I'm confessing that I stumble, needing God to be my guide. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not trying to be strong. I'm professing that I'm weak and pray for strength to carry on. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not bragging of success. I'm admitting that I failed and cannot ever pay the debt. When I say I am a Christian, I don't think I know it all. I submit to my confusion, asking humbly to be taught. When I say I am a Christian, I'm not claiming to be perfect. My flaws are far too visible, but God believes I'm worth it. When I say I am a Christian, I still feel the sting of pain. I have my share of heartache, which is why I seek God's name. When I say I am a Christian, I do not wish to judge. I have no authority. I only know I'm loved. Our name is Christian. We are God's children made so through our baptisms into Christ. May we strive to live in a way that always brings honor and praise and glory uh, to God's holy name. Let God's name be hallowed among us uh, today and forever. Amen.